Linux Mint is one of the easiest and coolest Linux distributions out there. And not just for beginners, but for anyone who just wants a stable system that works. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to liberate this machine or your PC from being locked behind a Microsoft account. Get ready, this is a very simple process. I got the B-Link uh, EQI Pro. I wanna mention that uh, B-Link sent me this device to review. They don't get any uh, editorial input on this. Thank you to B-Link for sending this to me. And you can use my affiliate link below to pick one of these up for yourself, if you're interested. And it has an Intel Core i7 13620H processor, 32 gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte of storage. And uh, this thing looks pretty, pretty nice. There's gonna be a link down below to pick one up for yourself. And I gotta say, seems relatively reasonably priced for what this is. Woo. That was a bit more of a pain in the butt to get out than I wanted it to be. The uh, standard documentation. Four pages of English instructions. <laughs> and then we're on to German, it looks like. We have, in the box, we have an HDMI cable as well as an AC power adapter. So that means this has an integrated power supply, which is good. I don't really like the power bricks that come with a lot of these. I'm gonna pop this out. We can just kind of unfold this, it looks like. Now, this has a little holographic Windows badge on it. You can see that. It's got like the Trypophobia Windows 11 background that has become iconic. Now, what I'm gonna be doing today is very simple. I'm gonna be installing Linux Mint on this because I like Linux Mint. I think it's a great beginner distro. Um, and it's even great for users who just kind of want something that works. Uh, so yeah, that's what this is. And if you wanna follow along, you can head over to uh, gardnerbryant.com where I'll have an in-depth guide on installing uh, Linux Mint on this bad boy. So I need an HDMI cable, and I have one right here. I'm not gonna use the one that they sent because I got, already have this connected to my video mixing board. Um, let's just go like that. All right, so first step, we're gonna go to linuxmint.com and we're gonna download the uh, version 22.2 ISO. I'm just gonna go with the standard version. All right, so now we have uh, the Linux Mint ISO downloaded. So let's go to my desktop and we'll find it there. And let's select drive F. Let's go ahead and start that process. Okay. Okay. All right, while that's running. So here's the mouse and keyboard. I just wanna turn this on and uh, there we go, B-Link. Oh, right, we have to go through this whole setup in order to do this. Also, looks like this isn't a super updated version of Windows 11 because uh, it let me create an offline account. <laughs> it let me create an offline account for my PC, the one that I own. I, guys, Windows 11 is evil. And that's why I'm making this video so that we can liberate this device, all right? Like this is, as of like this month, Microsoft is now holding your PC hostage from you behind a Microsoft account. And that is just <clears throat> unacceptable uh, in the clearest possible terms. So that's why I'm making this video uh, so that you know how to liberate your device. And hopefully you find value in what I'm doing here. All right, Windows is finally set up. Uh, and I really just want to go here and go to Task Manager and see what this device has to offer in terms of hardware. Uh, I don't know how to use Windows Task Manager, apparently. Right here. All right, so we have, as, the, as it says on the box, all right, Rufus is done creating our boot disk. So let's go down here and we'll unplug our SSD or our thumbstick, 128 gigabytes. And we'll just go over here and we'll plug this right into the B-Link. Boop, like that. So we've got this connected to our B-Link. So now we're just gonna shut this guy off. I'm gonna click there and hit shut down. And now we're going to install uh, 
Linux Mint on here. So let's uh, turn it on. And we want to make sure that we're hitting the right button here. Uh, I'm going to guess it's F10 because that's kind of the standard now, but who the hell knows really. Uh, you just want to watch down in the bottom. No, I think it said F7, so that didn't work. Let's restart it. If we look down in the bottom left-hand corner, yeah, boot manager, F7. And we'll pick Lexar USB flash drive. Now, if you get this machine, you'll want to hit F7 as well. If you have a different machine to install uh, Linux Mint on, you're going to want to check down in the corner to make sure uh, that you're hitting the right key. Sometimes it's F7, sometimes it's F8, sometimes it's F10, sometimes it's delete or escape. I, I made a video about how to figure that out here. All right, so we're gonna select uh, Start Linux Mint 22.2 Cinnamon 64-bit. That's just the first option. Uh, if you do this and it just results in a black screen, then you can go down to Linux Mint 22 compatibility mode, uh, and that should give you uh, better drivers uh, like for the initial setup process. So we're just gonna start the first option here. Now we're booted off of the uh, USB drive here, um, but we can actually double click this, install Linux Mint, and that's gonna provide us with the uh, installer GUI. Now you can see this looks a lot like uh, Ubuntu and that's cause it is. Um, is there no Wi-Fi? Uh oh, that ain't good. Now this particular device, does not seem to have uh, Wi-Fi drivers. So we're just gonna plug in uh, my handy uh, desk ethernet cable. Uh, and now we should have internet. Now we have uh, the install multimedia codex. I'm gonna check yes, because I like listening to MP3s. Um, and then we'll go ahead and click continue. Now I was gonna show you guys how to resize uh, the, the Windows partition so that you could install uh, Linux Mint alongside Windows, but unfortunately the NTFS partition here doesn't show a uh, how much is used, which I believe means that uh, Windows has full disk encryption enabled, which also means that we cannot keep this copy of Windows that shipped with this device on here. If you wanted to dual boot, what my recommendation would be is to uh, reinstall Windows with full disk encryption with like half the drive uh, being dedicated as a Windows partition. And that's unfortunate, but it also seems a little bit deliberate. You know, that Microsoft wants to uh, uh, keep people from installing Linux on their machines and uh, also are making it more difficult for you to install Linux alongside your existing Windows partition. So I'm not gonna go any deeper into uh, installing Windows on this machine so that you can actually dual boot because you have to reinstall Windows at this point. So what we're gonna have to do is just erase the disk and install Linux Mint. And if you want to use uh, full disk encryption here, you can do so by clicking advanced features and then checking these boxes. And then we're going to click install now. This is going to automatically default to installing Linux Mint on the drive here. So we're gonna hit continue. And we'll hit continue again. And we're gonna go ahead and click continue. And you can see that we're already a quarter of the way done installing Linux Mint on this machine. Uh, it is a very quick process. Now we're about two, uh, a third of the way done. It's a super quick process. Installing Linux on any machine is going to take seconds. It's going to take a fraction of the time that it takes to install Windows. Once we get this installed, I'll show you guys how to do Wi-Fi drivers in case you wanna do that. Uh, as well as other drivers if this uh, requires any. We've been, we've been doing this for two minutes and it's almost done installing Linux Mint. I, I find that, uh, that tickles me. I love that. All right, it looks like Linux Mint finished installing. So let's just click restart now. It says, please remove the installation medium and press enter. And we are booting up for the first time. And if you want to follow along in written form, there is a link down below to my uh, article about this process. Uh, I go into a little bit deeper detail in some of the uh, things I'm talking about in this video. So make sure you check that out. All right, so now we're booted up to the Linux Mint desktop. And uh, this is pretty neat. Welcome to your new operating system. The welcome screen guides you through the first steps. All right, so we have desktop colors. We can hit launch here. And what that's going to do is it's going to let us pick the color theme. Um, now you can see the colors are changing down uh, in the select bar down here. 
I kind of like the orange and, and dark here. And if we click dark, then uh, we're going to have uh, complete, uh, all the windows will be dark at this point. Uh, we can pick Minty L or Minty Y or Minty X. Yeah. So there's a few styles. There's a few designs. I like, uh, I like this one like that. Let's go ahead and hit close. And fun fact, if you were to do this on Windows and you didn't have a registered copy, well, you wouldn't be able to do this on Windows. <laughs> Let's go down here to driver management. Now, this is going to be a big deal, um, especially for this machine, because it looks like drive Wi-Fi drivers are not installed. We have two network interfaces, which we have on the back here. And uh, if you have closed this window already, you can go down here and just type in driver and driver will be there. And what this is going to do is it's going to look for available drivers for your machine. And that is unfortunate. Um, really, there's no Wi-Fi drivers for this. So I just did a little uh, research and apparently the Wi-Fi drivers are supported on this machine. Um, the reason this happens because Windows doesn't fully shut down when you shut down Windows and it leaves the Wi-Fi card in a weird state. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to reset the uh, the Wi-Fi card so that you can use Wi-Fi when you set up um, your systems here. So to get Wi-Fi to boot on this machine, we actually need to shut it down. So we'll make sure that the power cable is unplugged Then we'll come around here to the front and we're just going to hold the power button down for 30 seconds. Okay, then we're going to plug it back in. All right, now that it's plugged in, let's power it back on. Go down here and look at that. Now we have Wi-Fi. All right, now let's just go exploring the uh, software center here. Let's go to Linux Mint down here. We're going to go to Software Manager under Administration. And this is the GUI that you'll use to actually install applications on Linux Mint. And you can see that there are some uh, very well-known, very popular applications, including Discord, Telegram, Spotify, uh, Inkscape, Bitwarden, Blender. These are excellent applications that uh, a lot of people are going to want to use. And uh, you can even see there should be Steam in here. Let's go ahead and click Steam. And we're just going to click Install. And this is going to also install a bunch of other applications. You can go ahead and click Continue because these are actually necessary but it is informing you uh, what's going to actually happen to your machine. Unlike most Windows applications, you, you, they won't actually tell you what's going to be installed, like what dependencies are going to be uh, brought along with whatever apps you're installing. Linux is all about informed consent. <laughs> all right, now we have Steam installed, so let's click Launch. Click Install, uh, because it has to download this whole Steam environment which this should be a familiar process to anybody on Linux or Windows or even Mac if you're running Steam. All right, so now you can see Steam is available. We could log in. So in quick testing of a few games, I was able to play some modestly taxing and admittedly slightly older uh, Linux games. In my testing, I tried BitTrip Runner 2 as well as Bulletstorm. Both of these games were installed through Steam and uh, they both run very nicely on this machine despite this having uh, Intel UHD graphics. Um, and if you have a problem with my game selection, I'm sorry, but these games are fun and I, they were what I was in the mood to play. <laughs> but that's not all. That's not all the applications you can install here. Um, if we click Discord, you can actually see that this is coming from Flathub. Now, what are Flatpaks? Well, they're like the lingua franca of Linux app distribution. Flatpaks are a way of sandboxing an application to keep the data on your computer separate from the applications that might not be trustworthy. Now, Discord is one of those applications. I'm not a fan of Discord. I don't recommend installing it, but if you do install it on your Linux machine, the best way to do it is as a flat pack. Now, there are a ton of really great applications, especially if you want to cut the, uh, the modern cord, meaning getting rid of streaming services that are stupid and worthless. Uh, you can actually use something like, um, now, is a really cool application that will get me banned on YouTube. So uh, you're not seeing this right now, unless you're on PeerTube. 
I have a, a PeerTube instance called subscribe2.me where you can head over there, get subscribed to my content using any Fediverse enabled account that you run. Uh, you can subscribe to my uh, channel there. And uh, this is a really neat application. Uh, again, if you're on YouTube, this is censored and you don't know what this is. You can check out PeerTube to find out what application I'm actually recommending here. And you know, there's just a ton of really great applications uh, available on Linux Mint. So yeah, that's how you install Linux Mint and that's how you install Linux Mint on the B-Link EQI Pro. Again, thank you to B-Link for sending me this device to check out. And uh, if you want, like I said, you can use the links down below to uh, pick one up for yourself. It's an affiliate link, it helps the show. I wanna take a moment and say thank you to everyone watching out there, including all these fine folks over here. Uh, these people have pledged their monthly support over on Patreon or on the Bryant Review as uh, monthly pledged members. It's because of you guys that I'm able to continue doing this work. I, I mean, if I didn't have these patrons, I would not be able to do what I'm doing here. Uh, so thank you so much, uh, genuinely. Uh, if you believe in the work I'm doing and you want to help support the work I'm if you believe in what I'm doing here and you want to help support my work, you can become a member over on the Bryant Review or you can uh, become a patron. It's all greatly appreciated. That's going to do it for now, though. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.